Right, today I want to show you a synth I've been working on. Um, uh, over the last few weeks, finally got it working uh, the way it's supposed to. Because um, it, it didn't at first, because I wasn't paying full attention to the data sheets of the chips I was using. Um, but it works now, so that's cool. Um, so I want to show you it. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, how it works, what it does, um, and then I'm going to try and get a decent recording of its output um, and then also hook it up to the oscilloscope um, to have a look at what it's doing in terms of that. Um, so, right, I'm going to crack straight on. Okay, so this is it. Um, so it's only breadboarded at the moment, obviously, as you can see, um, but I'm about to try and uh, move it over to perfboard. Um, so what this is, is it's kind of a digital uh, noise making circuit and I'm quite pleased with this one because this isn't one that I saw a design online or in a book. This is kind of a concept that I came up with and and then managed to implement on my own so I'm really happy with this. Um, so it, it came about because I was reading about um, a digital... Um, like components with digital circuits, I read about um, a shift register and what that does and then thought that you'd be able to make a cool noise maker out of it. So what we have um, is at this end there's four square wave oscillators and the pitch control of those is on these pots. Um, they are going into a um, a shift register so that is a 4014 um, that chip in there so what the shift register is doing is um, or, or at least the way that I'm using it it, it can do more than this Our, th those four inputs um, are going to different pins and it's um, it, it has a it has a kind of clock going to it and it check it, it it stores what value those pins were at at a certain point in time, and it then so if you imagine you've got your four values saved and they're either low or high, um, you know, like a square wave, it then pushes them out through a single output. So it kind of you, you've um, I don't know if you've got a one of them's low and then the next one's high. And your output is at that end, so this is the high one, this is the low one. So the output goes high because the high one's next. Then on the next clock, the high one's gone and the low one moves along and now the output pin is low. So you're loading in in parallel and shifting out in serial. Um, and I, So that was the idea I had, is basically, well, what happens if you have all of these pins with oscillators going to them? It's making them go low and high, and then you have a clock going to it, and it's it's basically taking the value from those pins at a point in time and then shifting it out and you, you'll end up with what I figured is you'd end up with a kind of um, not it wouldn't be it wouldn't be white noise because there'd be some kind of pattern to it um, but it'd be very noisy um, so so that's the the control of the oscillators pitch over there on this side this one's just the volume for the output this one is the uh, clock speed um, and all that, that's just another square wave oscillator. But what I've had to do is, um, so the clock um, from the 40106, which is in there, that's what I'm using as the oscillator. Um, I really need to buy a new camera. So as I was saying, um, 4014 is the shift register, so the clock's going from the 4106 to the 4014. Then in the middle I have a 4017, which is a decade counter. What that does is every time it receives a clock pulse, it's got uh, it's got ten outputs, one of which will be will be high. And when it receives a clock pulse, the next one goes high, and the and the one that was high goes low. So it, it's kind of you can use it for counting. Um, but I kind of uh, I realise you can also use it kind of to 
divide your clock pulses because this 4014 what you have to do is there's a one of its pins tells it to read from the parallel inputs but then it won't shift out of the serial output unless that um, unless that pin changes low so it has to be high for it to read the parallel but then it has to be low while you're pushing it out of the serial so I've got four oscillators and what that means is for one of every four clock pulses I had to make that pin high and for the rest it had to be low so what this thing does is output well output zero if you follow the data sheet is is connected to the um, parallel in on here and then output 4, which is technically the fifth step, um, resets it. So every clock pulse, it, it kind of, it kind of out, out, output 1, well output 0, it kind of goes clock pulse and it's on 1, clock pulse is on the next one, clock pulse is on the next one, clock pulse is on the last one, one more clock pulse, it goes off the end which immediately resets it back to the first one. So the effect that has is, like I said, for every four clock pulses uh, received by this thing it gets one kind of one of them also makes the parallel in port go high so and then the last thing is um, the 4106 the um, I messed around with capacitor values I've got two that are pretty small values um, and then, um, so I've got two little ceramic ones, two electrolytic ones, and and that, and then another uh, electro uh, electrolytic, electrolytic. You know what? I'm gonna look that up because I did this in another video and I didn't know how to say it. Uh, 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 electrolytic. I was right. Okay, right. I'll carry on. So yeah, um, hopefully, I know that that's kind of a lot of. A lot of words, but I just wanted to try and explain how this works. So, um, yeah, hopefully you followed that. Happy to ask questions. Just comment if you uh, if you have any questions about how it's working. Uh, please comment. I did try drawing up a schematic for it, um, but I realised that is a skill I need to practice. So hopefully I'll be able to post one up somewhere soon. Right, I think what I'm going to do here is um, I'm recording the output of this because uh, I'm going to try and get a decent recording so you can hear it and it's not just through the uh, camera mic. So um, if everything goes to plan, as soon as I um, as soon as I plug in, I'll just flick over to my recorded audio um, and you can hear what's what. So. So that's it with everything turned down. Um, so the first thing I'll do is sweep the clock from its lowest value to its highest value. So there's some really interesting stuff kind of up at the higher end of that. Um, so I've got two kind of lower range oscillators, which are these two. So you kind of can't hear much of what they do when you start turning them up. But that's because you need to change where the clock is. So you kind of the value of the clock uh, kind of affects what you can hear from the oscillators. So I'm going to like clock up a bit. Somewhere. 
There we go. Right. So, what's this one low? Uh, as we get higher. So it's kind of just affecting the texture of the sound. You get a similar thing with this one. Especially if I now sweep the clock up. Now I can add this one up. I'm gonna blast everything on full. doing something. That's what that sounds like. Um, it'll probably be interesting. Uh, somewhere in here, yeah, there we go. It'd be interesting to swap out this um, the potentiometer that's controlling the clock for a photoresistor. What do we get? What do we get now? Let's see. Uh, I'll put this in. to mess with that. Oh well, interesting experiment anyway. So that's what it sounds like. Right, this will be quick because it's, um, I couldn't get it looking as good as I'd hoped. 
but it still kind of illustrates what's happening. So this is um, should be anyway a normal um, square wave. Uh, so it's the important the important thing to note. Just ignore the fact that it's bending all over the place. Is that it's regular? The kind of the highs and the lows are in the same at the same point by like each cycle. So contrast that to what we're getting from the output of this thing. And it's all over the place. It's not regular at all. Um let's see slide down a bit. And as I speed the clock up, you get to see more of them. And that's why it sounds so noisy. Um, what else have we got? Up? So yeah, still interesting to see, so yeah, well, I find it interesting anyway, and it's my video, so it's going in. So hopefully you found that useful or interesting or both, um, hopefully not neither, um, and if so I guess fair enough. Um, so like I said earlier, feel free to ask questions about how it works, um, I'm happy to answer those. And if I do manage to come up with a readable schematic, I'll post that as well. Um, and yeah, I'll, I guess the next time you see that, it'll be boarded up and put in some kind of enclosure. Um, so yeah, fun, fun, fun. Laters.